right, in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a basic trading view uh, account and use it for paper trading. So you can sort of look at the stock market, get involved a little bit, see how it moves, and not risk any money. So that's a big thing for people who are just getting into it. We don't want to uh, waste a bunch of money trying to figure it out. So they give you the option to set up an account um, and track your performance uh, just as if you were using money. You can see what your profit loss would be without actually having to risk any money. So that being said, uh, what you want to do is go to tradingview.com and it will look like this. You will go to over here to get started. And then these are the options. Uh, if at some point you want to pay, you get a little bit more. Um, there's better uh, abilities to add indicators strategies, things like that, but for just trying to look at the very basic aspects of trading, you can move down here and just select try free basic. So you put in an email address. The password. Read the condition, say you're not a robot, and create an account. Go through all of this, verify, create account. And then go to your email. Confirm your, your email address, activate your account. And then you're back to trading view. <clears throat> okay, I'm not going to add a picture or anything. Uh, I'll stop from marking the email. Name. Okay, so then it brings you back to this page right here. And what you want to do is go up to products and select chart. Okay, so this is where it starts uh, for everybody. And what I'm going to show you some of the very basics to set this up where you can use it. Um, some of the key um, points that you want to be able to move through are like your time frames. So if you go up here, you see the time frame it says day. And then here's the options for various time frames you can select that will change the chart and give you different views of, of the day, the week, the hour, whatever it is. So what I like to do is go over here to the right and click this little star, and then it'll make this a favorite, and it'll put it up there on the top bar for you. So the first thing you want to do is click your one minute, your five minute, your 15 minute, your hour, your four hour, and your day. Okay? One minute, five minutes, 15 minutes, one hour, four hours, and day. This is just what you can start with. There might be times when you want to go look at a 30 minute, even seconds, sometimes months, weeks, what have you, but this will put just these up here on this top bar up here. So now when you click off on the chart, if you look up here on the top, you have your one minute, five minute, 15 minute, etc. So this is important for, like right here, this is a day chart. This isn't something you'd be able to trade like minute by minute, hour by hour, because each candle is only showing you the price movement for an entire day. So if you were trying to day trade, uh, you need to see something a little bit, uh, yeah, something in the minutes. So you go up here and maybe click 15 minutes, okay? Five minutes, 
and it gives you um, candles now that represent five minutes or you can even go to a minute and now you're looking at price action for one minute. This is something you could trade off during the day, um, just depending on what you want to do. But for right now, this is just kind of to set up some of the indicators, uh, time frames, things like that, put some things in a watch list, and then show you how to paper trade. So if you pay, you get rid of these ads, but for right now, we'll just cycle through it. Okay, so now you got your time frames up here. Um, next thing you want to do is add indicators. So the very basic indicators that you need are some moving averages, volume, and RSI. There's thousands of indicators. There's YouTube channels dedicated to showing you different indicators, and I've been through a bunch of them, and what I found out is really, and what I've learned from the people who just do this professionally is there's really only a few indicators that they use, and some of them don't use any. They just use price action, candlestick patterns, um, trend lines and things like that, and they're very successful. So my advice would be to just start with this, uh, these basic indicators, which I'm calling them basic, but it's only the ones professionals use. So they're, they're almost the, probably the best and most useful indicators. The other ones, um, some people have created those just to get views on YouTube, and you know they're not actually, if you back test them, they don't actually perform in the way that they're promoted. So I learned that the hard way. So I wasted a lot of time going through trying different indicators, looking for the holy grail that would give me you know, perfect trades and no losses, and it's not out there. So these indicators that I'm going to show you <clears throat> will help, um, help you develop a strategy around and kind of show you where price has been and where it's going. It, it has some predictive elements that are important. Uh, the other stuff, like I said, it's, it's really hit and miss, and a lot of it is, is not very useful at all. So up here uh, is indicators. So let's click on that. And then you'll want to go to I can never remember what it is. Can it one? All right, I'm sorry. Let me log into my account. Ten and one different many averages. Okay. All right. Well, I'm just going to stay in my account and kind of show you. It, it'll be uh, basically the same thing now. After showing you how to set up the um, TradingView account. So indicators. Uh, click. Uh, type in ten and one, and you should see this ten and one different many averages. So click on the little yellow favorite right there, and it'll put it in your favorites list. Then the next one, you're going to type in uh, RSI, and you're going to select the star next to relative strength index, and that's really it. Okay, so once you do that, um, once you click on those, you'll have <clears throat> your indicators. Relative strength index is this one right here on the bottom. And basically what that just tells you is uh, if, a, if a stock is overbought or oversold. So when this purple line gets way up here towards 70-ish, that means it's oversold and it's not a good time to buy. Chances are it's, it's getting ready for a reversal. And if you watch the price action here and you kind of compare it to your RSI down here, you can see that when it got down here, it was also very low on the RSI, and you could have predicted by watching this that you were getting close to a reversal. After that, you're just looking for confirmation before you get into buy, which would have been right here, a couple green candles. There's your confirmation. You're bouncing off the uh, 
oversold area of the RSI, and then you're coming back up. So that would have been a huge buy right there, very profitable. Um, so then it comes up, it kind of bounces around, and it, it can ride above that, but it's just a risky place to buy. So I'm still struggling with how to, how to sort of still take profit up here when I know it's risky. Um, everybody has a different tolerance for you know risk management, so some people might not even care about that being high, but um, the limited experience I have has kind of shown me that once it gets up there, it's, it's going to turn around pretty soon. So, All right, so that's RSI. Moving averages, when you select these indicators, you'll see over here, here's, here they are. If it doesn't put it down here in the bottom, then it'll be up here. So volume and moving averages are right here. This is where you would turn them on or off. And you can also hide them by clicking that little arrow. It'll hide them. So sometimes I want to get all that out of the way. I'll hide it. Like this right here. If I don't want to see that while I'm trying to chart something. I'll hide it. If I want to edit something or change it, I'll bring it back down. And then over here, you can also hide it individually and edit it individually. This little gear is the settings. So you would go in for this one. You're going to need to edit it. We're going to add. Um, Two moving averages, actually three. So the first one, you're going to make it an, an SMA 180, and red. The second one is going to be an SMA 50. It's going to be blue. And then the third one is going to be an SMA 10 and it's going to be yellow. Okay, so you get all those like that, and then say OK. And now you see on the chart you have these three lines, a yellow, a red, and a blue. Let's go back and edit them real quick. And let's change the style of the line to make it a little bit heavier. So that's the thickness. I'm going to change all three of those thicknesses. You click on the line. Down here, second thickness. And then, okay, now the yellow one. And you just go back up here to the gear icon anytime you just hit that to edit it. And you click on the line, thickness. Okay, it just makes them a little brighter, a little easier to see. Okay, so those are set up. Volume is default, RSI is default. You go. If you double click on the screen, sometimes uh, it will maximize the screen and get rid of the RSI. So if you're doing something and it disappears, just double click on the screen again and it pops back up. Another handy note is um, right now, all I can do is move the screen side to side. I can't move it up and down. I can't move it diagonally. If I try, it, it just wants to go side to side. So if you go down here to the right corner and click on the auto, Deselect that. Now you can move it the way you want. And your mouse um, wheel will compress or extend that way. So if you move the mouse up or down, it stretches it out. See? If I want to compress it, I'll bring it back with the mouse. You can also come over here <clears throat> and with your mouse wheel and then up and down this way. So the easiest way to get the most range of motion is to have auto unselected. That way you can move the chart wherever you want and your mouse wheel will work both ways wherever you're at. If you're here, it'll do that. If you're over here, it'll go up and down. Over here on the, the price scale. Okay. And this is good for when you're trying to get detailed looks. Um, if I'm charting up, trading on a one minute chart and I really want to get detailed to see like what the condition of these little widths are and everything, I might be trading on something this size right here. So I'm really trying to pay attention if there's a width on the bottom. Did I clear this line, you know, like right here? Did I really clear the line or not? I might stretch that out just a little bit to see the edges that are on. So there's different reasons for having that kind of flexibility. Um, okay, so now we've got a chart, we've got our indicators. Uh, volume is self explanatory. It's just how many shares were traded on that candle. So if you look right here, um, when you're moving your cursor, if you look up here, there's your volume. 
And you can also right click right here on this bar, and you can add volume up there as well. That's just where I use. That's where I'm looking to do it, the middle of the screen. And I have volume up here. Um, and as you move across the candles, if you're looking up here, you're looking at the opening price, the high price, the low price, the closing price, um, cents or dollars change in price, and percentage change in price. And then here's the amount of volume for that particular time frame. So this stuff's good to know. Like sometimes I'll look for a candle and put a percentage to show me how much momentum I've got going into the trade. Um, you want to know, you know, the, the visual representation you get right here is, is pretty good, but sometimes I'll have a threshold for like I'm not going to get in unless I see a, a one percent candle, something like that. So then I would use I'm looking uh, up here the percentage as well. Okay, um, so for paper trading, to set up an account to just kind of, um, you know, get a feel for how this works, you go down here to trading panel, click on that, and then click connect on paper trading. Okay, and click on it again. Well, you go in and set it up. I think it starts you out. If you hit uh, reset trading account, uh, I think the balance that it starts you out with is hundred thousand dollars. So I use twenty-five thousand. Just it's a little more realistic um, for trying to gauge. You know, but if you're, if you're going to start with a small account, maybe start with you know a thousand, five thousand, something like that. Um, okay. Then it shows your account balance right here. Your account balance, your equity. As you make trades, this number will change to show you whether you uh, give you your profit loss. And while you have open trades, it'll show you where you're at. In case you have two or three different trades going on, um, you don't have to go try to look at every screen. It'll just show you your overall profit loss over here. Okay, so I've got my paper trading set up. Uh, reset it to 5,000. So then you click on this again and you minimize it. Anytime you want to bring it up, you can maximize it. You can size this. Say so you want to just keep your profit loss open while you're trading. You can kind of size it down to right there. And now it'll stay right there. If you click that again, and then it closes it. And if you open it, it'll come back to that spot. If you want to resize it to keep all your other stuff, you have to bring it back up. So there's a way to resize that. And then all of this is resizable also for your indicators. So again, once I get my indicators all set up, I hide these. So I click the up arrow, and that hides it. Okay, so nothing's really moving right now because the stock market's closed. Um, I'm going to go over to some crypto that I have. Oh, watch list. Okay, so on your watch list, um, let me go back out into my free account. The watch list is handy for once you start trading or you're, you know, you're paper trading and you want to move back and forth from one stock to another uh, without having to go type it in and select it out of a list, you can set up this watch list. It comes pre-configured with these um, categories, indices, stocks, futures. You can move this window down to get this stuff out of the way. I mean, there's crypto. So in the beginning, uh, it's already got Apple, Tesla, uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum. It's, it's got some things to play with. Um, as you're, if you want to add things to it, up here is where you can create a new watch list. And then also, 
it starts you out with an empty red list. And what this is handy for is any stock that I search on. So when you, here's where your uh, picker is. If you click on that, it brings up a list. And this is where you would type in to try to find a, a, a new stock. So I want to look at Tesla. E-S-L-A. And if you don't know the ticker, you can type the company name and it'll still and it'll take you to the ticker. Okay. Okay. So the ticker. Now, a, a shortcut way to add this to a, um, a watch list is to go over here, click on this little symbol here, and it'll give you some colors. Select the red one. Okay. Now it's got a red mark next to it. If you go over here to your watch list now and you look at your red list, it'll just have Tesla. So if you're starting out, the best way to go might be to just pick some stocks you want to look at and play with and put them all on the red list. That way you're not confused with all of the other stuff because when the market's open, all these are changing, everything's moving. Uh, there's a lot of noise here. Uh, so let's put a few stocks in the red list. We'll go Tesla, Apple, and you can use each one of these colors to create a new category. So uh, eventually you might want to break it down into crypto, uh, ETFs, stocks, what have you. And the reason it's handy to do it this way rather than creating a new list is these are searchable in the scanner. Suppose you want to look at certain um, descriptives of a certain group of stocks. You can apply it to your red list, your blue list, your green list. If you have them in the watch list, you can't do that. You have to add each stock individually to your scanner, and it's a lot more difficult. So. I found using these is, is really convenient. So I added Apple, add SPQ, add the uh, ETFs that I like, put it on the red list, CQQ, SP 500, ETF. Those. They move on the weekends, so it's something that's handy to use uh, for training. Because during the week, nothing's moving. Or during the weekend. So what I did there was, when you start out, it gives you all sources. But I'm trying to find the... Uh, the cryptos that I use, so I go to, I search TradeStation, and I select TradeStation. Now when I type BTC, it gives me my uh, Bitcoin US dollar right here. So I'm going to red list that, and I'm also going to red list the Ethereum, Ethereum US dollar. Okay, so red list that. Okay. So now when you go over here to your watch list, Click on that, and you'll have red list. Now you've got the stocks that you are focused on, that you're primarily interested in, and you don't have to worry about uh, all that other, um, all that other stuff. Uh, this you can move side to side. If you need more room. Uh, I like to use the. Um, So I use the change percentage, the volume. That's about it. So if you select those three right there, uh, that will give you these columns, which shows you the last price, the change percentage, and the volume. And then if you click on symbol, it will sort it by symbol. Or you can sort it by volume. If you want to know which one's moving you know, the most, it's millions, 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 millions. This is all millions. So that one would be the biggest. But for right now, just keep it easy. We'll sort out a symbol. Then you can bring this back up. And anything you select in your watch list, it'll give you further information and details down here below. Um, if you make a note, you can add a note to Apple. Um, your iPhone coming out. And add that note. Then on the symbol itself, it shows you the little note marker. So you know which ones you have noted. And then when you click on it here, you'll see the note down here, which is handy if there's uh, any information you're trying to track, earnings information, 
any kind of catalyst, anything you know that is going to make this stock pop, and you put that in the notes there, just kind of help reference it. I don't use this stuff down here. I mean, it's handy to kind of just for a quick glance, know where you're at in the day range and the 52 week range. Uh, usually, what I do is my watch list is so long now that I have it down here, so I can see it as a note. So I keep it down about like that. Okay, so um, if we were to want to practice trading and setting up an order now, um, here's your buy and sell buttons over here. Uh, blue is buy, red is sell. You can also do a right click, trade, create new order. This is probably a good way to start. And then click here on these three dots until it docks to the right. And it will put your order um, order page kind of right there on the, on the sheet. You can minimize your watch list by clicking on this up here. This row of icons right here gives you different options. Uh, if you have alerts set up, it would be right here. Here's news, data window. So I'll, there's functions for a ton of different stuff in these little icons, but the, the point for right now is this is where you minimize it and maximize it. So if you want to see your watch list, you click on this up here. If you want to get rid of it and hide it, you just do that. Um, for the uh, order page, you would just click the X and it would go away and it would just leave you with your chart. So then back to right click, trade, create new order. And then if you had it docked, it'll keep it docked. So we'll go to a crypto real quick. Since it's moving, we can actually place an order. Um, we'll go to uh, Ethereum. For the $5,000 account, we don't have enough money to buy any Bitcoin yet, but it's headed that way. Okay, so you've got three different types of orders here um, that you can use. This is the very basic uh, order types. Some of the other platforms give you a lot more options, which I'm considering uh, moving over to TD Ameritrade, Stink or Swim right now because of the ability to set trading uh, trailing stops uh, and have uh, real-time level two data. So I already funded my account just so I can have access to the trading platform. I'm playing with it right now, but this is a good way to get introduced to trading for free. Um, so I would start with this. All right, so a market order. If you just want to buy something at the current price right now and have it executed immediately, you do a market order. Okay. Um, the limit orders, or if you have a price in mind that you don't want to pay more than, you set that price in a limit order. And then when it hits that price, the order is generated, it turns it into a market order and it's executed. Um, let's buy one Ethereum. You can set the take profit and stop loss ahead of time, or you can just create the order and then manually do it, which I find to be easier because I can see it on the chart and I can kind of gauge where I'm going to do it. So um, if we did, let's do it both ways. I'll, I'll do a stop loss for, um, I'm going to set my stop loss to 1297. No, let's do 1296. And my take profit at 1301. Okay, so I've got one unit of Ethereum. Uh, the price right now is twelve ninety nine twenty four, and if you look up here, it shows you what your buy price and your sell prices are. The middle is the spread. That's how much the uh, market maker or the broker or whoever makes off your transaction. So for every share you buy, you're going to pay them this amount right here. So I'll start out with like sixty nine cents in the hole. So. Remember, I set the stop loss to 12.96. Take profit at 13.01. A stop loss is when it hits that amount, it's going to sell. Okay, so you determined in your mind ahead of time what your risk is, how much you want to risk, and this is just an example. I wouldn't risk five dollars on something that moves this much, but just to kind of show you how it works. Um, that's your risk, and then your take profit is where you would want it to sell automatically. So some of this is sort of autopilot um, for people who can't sit there and watch it. Um, so I'm going to buy one of those. All right. So it set my take profit up here at 13.01. It set my stop loss down here at 12.96. So 
So this is the price action right now. I, I started a little bit in the hole because of the spread, 55 cents was the spread, I'm 55 cents in the hole. As this moves, and this is why we expand, as you can see this price action moving right now, this will change. If it's going down, I'm gonna be in the hole. You're gonna see a minus. If it breaks this blue line, then I'll be in the plus. If it makes it up to here, where I've set my take profit ahead of time, it's going to sell automatically and it's going to um, show up down here as profit. So right down here, it shows you where you're at on the order. So if I want to go look at something else, um, I could still kind of keep an eye on where my order progress is as far as you know profit, um, profit or loss. But as you can see, now I'm a few cents to the good. Moving up. I'm on a one minute time frame right now. And here's why you use the different time frames. Um, let me minimize all this. All right, so before I would have placed an order, I would have started out at like the, the day or the hour, started out at maybe the day. And when you switch from one time frame to another, you'll get this right here and you need to condense it down to where it's readable. So this is where you use your mouse wheel to bring it all down. To where it kind of gives you an idea of where you're at. When you look at it from the hour point of view or from the day point of view, uh, each one of these candles is now a day. We're just in a period of consolidation right now. It could break low and keep going down. It could bounce and take off up. We don't know. But this is handy to use um, to kind of get an overall bird's eye view of what the stock's been doing. Um, you know, in the, in the recent past, it's on a downtrend, it stopped, it's consolidating. So not a great time to buy right now because there's no direction, but just for kind of show you how this works, uh, this will work. If it was trending down, then, you know, um, based on some trend lines and some other information we could have gathered from the moving averages, the RSI, we could have decided whether we wanted to go long or go short. Going long is just um, buying, assuming it's gonna go up and setting your risk management, your stop loss and your take profit along those lines. Uh, going short is the opposite. You bet on it going down and you make money on it going down. I'll show you how to do that as well. Okay, so now we go back to the hour time frame. So again, you have to kind of use your mouse wheel over here to stretch and move, move around, center it. Turn it. Centering. Okay, so the last couple hours, uh, big drop, big drop, big drop coming back up, coming back up. So, uh, yeah, making a buy right there wasn't a terrible idea because this might be trying to kick back up to maybe some kind of a, a zero line up here. Um, so I'm still minus 21 cents. So what's cool about trading view, and then the reason I got this is some brokers, um, all brokers have their own ways to Give you the same visual representation charting and the ability to buy and sell stocks. Not all of them have this feature where you can move your stop loss and your profit target. Okay, so I'm going to modify that. And it changes it now. So if I want to modify my stop loss, I can bring it down, modify it, and that changes it. So it changed the amount too. So now my profit loss went from you know a buck or so down to 11. Uh, my target went up. Nine dollars. Uh, this is was handy for me as a beginner. Now I'm starting to think maybe one of these other platforms that have the automated trailing stop might be better for what I'm trying to do. But this still works really good for me, and I can manually trail it. And what that means would be, say, this starts to break really good up, and I start making a lot of money. Well, if my stop loss is right here at nine bucks, if I don't do something, and, and this has happened to me before, I've had a set profit set and I got all excited because I saw it going up, up, up real fast, making a bunch of money and boom, it sold and I, you know, I made money but I wasn't paying attention and I've been paying attention I would have been moving this up, up, up and capturing more of the gain and at the same time bringing my stop loss up, up, up under it to preserve my winning. So if I'm already in the green I can move the stop loss up to 
may not let me do that right now because the price is actually under. So normally if the price was up here, then I could move the stop loss up over my initial buy price, but under the actual current price. And that way if it drops, it doesn't drop all the way back down to where I bought it. So say I'm up 50 bucks and I want to preserve, preserve 40 of that, but I still want to give it a chance to keep going up. I would raise my profit target and I would raise my stop loss up to $40. That way if it did start to come back down, I would still make that $40. That stops it from... It just helps you, you know, not lose uh, money after you've already had some. You know, you want to stay in the green if you can. So that's why this was really handy. I thought, you know, I think I jinxed myself by doing that. I got it all Let me see. I can't see this. Okay. Yeah. Okay. There's no really good way to show you because it's, it's not far. The price isn't far enough away from where I bought it to move the stop loss up to show you. I might can move it up to like plus a quarter and I can modify it. Okay, that works. So now if it, I'm a dollar to the good, if it came, if it started coming back the other way, it would sell for me at plus 22 cents. That's, that's basically what having a moving stop loss does for you. So you kind of have to monitor that this is something for day trading. You're already sitting there, you're, you're on a minute time frame. You're looking to capture just pennies, uh, pennies at a time with you know a lot of shares traded. Uh, normally if I'm on like Apple trading 600 shares, a 10 cent move is $60. And I'm, so I'm looking for every 10 cent move. Once I get 10 cent moves, that's $60. I move my stop loss up to like 50. So if it drops that 10, I sell and I keep 50. But I'm also allowing it to keep going up. So then when it hits 100, I'll leave my stop loss up to right under 100, again, for the same reason. Now if it drops, I'm going to get that 100. But I'm still giving it room to continue going up because on a good run, uh, these stocks should move dollars at a time. And if you can capture a move from here to here on something like Apple or even any of them, um, that's, that's really profitable. So you don't want to leave the take profit at, at your starting point if it looks like it's just going to blow through it. So that's why I started using this, um, or why I thought this was the platform to use. I'm going to cancel this order. I made $2.92. Close position. Okay, so it closed my order. It also canceled my uh, stop loss order and profit target because those were not actually used. They were orders that were created but not executed. So then if you go down here to your account balance, you'll see. Uh, it kept track for me. So on that little trade, I made three bucks. Um, and that's kind of what will give you an idea of if you can make money doing this. If you can do this practicing and build an account, then you can have some level of confidence that if you put money in and did the same thing, you would also be able to make money. It, it's not guaranteed, though, because once you start having money on the line, there's an emotional component that's very, very impactful. And it can make you do things that you wouldn't do when you're just paper trading. You'll chase stuff. You'll have revenge trading. Um, you'll you'll try to catch things going up where you normally wouldn't, you know, or where you normally shouldn't. So there's uh, some consideration from being able to master your emotions to some degree and be disciplined once you start using real money that I'm still working on. So it's not a perfect time. Um, so the other thing would be to go short. So in order to go short, you have to have a margin account. You have to have at least $2,000 in it. Um, I wanted the ability to go both ways in the market because if I can only buy, then I can only make money if the market's going up for the most part. You might be able to get some little dip buys, but um, trending-wise, you know, uh, the trend is your friend is the thing they have. So I wanted to be able to go both ways, so that's why I got a margin account. With a margin account, you can... You're, you're basically borrowing shares from your broker at one price and then selling them back at a different price whether or not you make or lose money. If the price went down, then you would have made money. If the price went up, then you would have lost money. It's the same thing as a regular order, just in reverse. So instead of buying shares, 
you would sell shares. So even if you don't have any shares to sell, the program and the broker knows that when you click on sell, you're wanting to short the stock, you're borrowing these shares. So I'm going to sell one, uh, one share of Ethereum. This time I'm not going to set a take profit or stop loss, and I'll show you the difference how you can get in manually after you create the order. And what this led me to do was starting to use my hotkeys where I pre-configure how many I want to buy ahead of time, and then all I have to do is click the button. Uh, I turned off the confirmation, so it's just a lot quicker. I can just get in and buy it, set amount of shares, and then I'll go over there and manually adjust my stop loss and take profit. So I'm going to sell one share, uh, no Nothing for stop loss to take off it. Okay, so now it didn't, it didn't put that up here, but if I put my mouse right here, now I have SL, there's stop loss, CP is take off it. So now once I have this in here, I can manually decide, okay, how much do I want my stop loss to be? Uh, I want it to be five dollars. Okay, five dollars a dish, or five dollars more. I guess I have to go a little bit lower. Stop loss, not being so current path. All right, so stop loss, we'll move it down here. There we go. Oh, I'm sorry, it's a short. I have to go the other way for the stop loss. So when you're shorting your stop loss, your lose money is above because you're betting on it going the other way. So my stop loss can be $5. $5 ish. All right. And my take profit down here to about twelve ninety, and you can see it shows you in the box um, how much you're at. So right now it's twelve dollars, eleven dollars, ten dollars, nine dollars. Um, make my take profit about eleven bucks. That's a two to one risk to reward ratio. <clears throat> so now those are set up, and now if the stock goes down, I'll make money. And again, it's the same thing, just in reverse. So it'll keep track of whether I'm up or down right here. Um, and these are still movable. If the price starts going down really aggressively, I can move this down and capture more of it. And then I can do the same thing with my stop loss. I can follow the order um, so that if it makes a turnaround, it doesn't turn all the way back around and go all the way back up and I lose money, um, which that's not the goal of any of this. So that's really about it. Um, so yeah, that will that'll get you in. You can you can track this. Um, you know, there's tons of videos on YouTube, things you can look at to try to find out how to plot the price action to know whether something's going to go up or down. And that's where the practice and the intuition comes in, I guess. But, so try to maybe figure out what a strategy would be, see what seems to work, see if you can make it profitable, and then if you can, put some money in and um, give it a shot. That's it. Thanks.